Hello and welcome to a series of videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert, the remote SCADA and telemetry software from Schneider Electric. I'm Steve and I'm going to review how you can get the best performance from your GeoSCADA system, specifically this time, how to set it up. In our GeoSCADA Expert Performance Guidelines document, we list the various activities which affect performance. We've covered point updates in the last video, and in this we'll focus on a few important setup points and enablers for a good performance foundation. I have grouped items together in this video into categories. Let's start with storage and logging. We recommend that all GeoSCADA system storage uses high performance solid state disks. If possible, Please use separate devices for log files and the GeoSCADA database. And for more performance, you could also separate the devices used for the GeoSCADA historian. You can set up the location of the various GeoSCADA database sections using the server configuration tool. Select system configuration and then select locations. By default, the locations are in program data on the C drive. To change these settings, you'll be asked to restart GeoSCADA. You must also move the files themselves if you wish to keep them in the database. I've highlighted the historian folders here with stars. Log file locations are configured in a few places. The server configuration tool allows the location of database server logs and snapshot logs. These logs are very useful for diagnosing performance issues. If you've got the disk space available, select the maximum file size, number of files, and number of file sets to keep, and do this for server logs and snapshots. Please ensure that the reset counter setting is enabled. This is useful later for load diagnosis. The log file locations for drivers are configured on the modules page of the server status app. Select the Logging Context menu and then the Configuration tab. To change all of these, you would need to click each one by one. But Alternatively, you can change all the log files in one go using the Move Log Files feature in the Server Configuration tool. This will set all log locations to the same folder, including logs for the database, dump files and Vuex. So you may wish to re-customize those folders. Now moving on to some parameters related to database search and SQL. There are two pages of the server configuration tool which relate to SQL searches. These need to be set to sensible values to reduce the impact of poorly constrained searches by users. The limits are in historic configuration search limits and SQL query configuration parameters. Press F1 to get help on the specifics of each field here. One approach is to restrict the searches and then see if any users or reports are constrained and then relax the restrictions a little. At this point, I'll mention some practices related to anti-malware setup. Of course, we want the best security arrangements for SCADA and that includes using anti-malware software. However, this can interfere with system performance while we can't offer settings for specific products, we do recommend turning off on access scanning for the GeoSCADA database folder, particularly the historian folders. If your anti-malware software supports it, you can leave a scheduled scan running for these folders, providing that such a scan does not lock a file preventing change, which could cause GeoSCADA database to pause. You can check which programs are accessing files using the SysInternals Process Monitor tool available from Microsoft. The next section will require some design and prediction for your system. How best to set up the historian? We touched on separate storage for historian data earlier. Now we need to consider the setup of historic data lifetimes and streams. Starting with lifetime and with historic point and accumulator data, let's take a look here are the basic settings, and you can see that the online period is the first setting. Data is stored for at least this period 
are then deleted at midnight UTC, Sunday to Monday. The future setting is used to filter out data received from devices which might have an invalid clock setting. Archiving is an optional feature used less these days because disk storage is plentiful and the archive process also exerts extra historian load, particularly on busy systems. If you don't need it, please don't use it. If you do require archive, check out the F1 help to see how to set it up. Remember that the archive index is kept online and that older data from seldom connected devices will not be archived if it's received after the archive time. For historic data from points and accumulators, all points have got the same online and archive period. Here, they're set for 360 weeks plus five, total 365 weeks. For GeoSCADA 2023, there are new alternative maximum lifetimes available for point configuration. These shorten the life for selected points, perhaps to be used with points with a higher data frequency. For this point historic data, there's another setting called index after. By using this, you can reduce the system startup time and reduce memory use. This feature is mainly effective for large systems and you may wish to contact the support team for advice before it's deployed. You could try without it first. Stream setup is important for all but the smallest GeoSCADA systems. Streams apply to the text-based historians such as the events and the alarm summary. The stream size for events gathers event entries for consecutive database items into hourly files. This diagram can help explain this, but do note that the ordering is not by database hierarchy, it's by database item ID. Streams are used to group and separate files in the historian, so you don't get files which are too large or too many files, either of which could cause performance issues. To query all database items for an hour, hundreds of files might need to be searched, and to query one database item for a month, large hourly files maybe need to be searched. So the decision you take here is always going to be a compromise for each history type, but a larger stream size than the default is typically needed. Finally, Although the stream size can be changed, doing so after the system has been running live can cause exceptional delays and loss of service. So you really must set this up before going live. A review of historian settings and performance wouldn't be complete without discussing the historic cache settings. Taking cache size first, this setting allows the server to retain history for faster searches. The cache contains both writable and unchanged data. And if memory is available, you can increase this for performance, which depends very much on the type of queries used and the writable data in the cache. Check usage in the cache columns in the server status page. The flush time limit parameter controls how long the server will pause to write historic data. During this time, the database is exclusively locked you shouldn't need to change this setting as longer flushes may be noticed as pauses in client operation. Finally, the upper and lower thresholds control the dynamic changes to the data flush frequency. These numbers should be about 20% different from each other. Making them too small will cause additional flush and disk activity too large and the server shutdown time will be extended. You can adjust these settings during server operation and also check their effect by looking at the flush interval, which should remain at 60 seconds here and only dip below periodically. I've covered the basics of setup which can affect performance. I hope you found this review helpful. There's a lot more to good SCADA performance, such as logic configuration and calculations, not forgetting SQL queries and reporting and some of these will be covered in future videos. There's a lot to discover in our new versions and we're continuing to innovate with new features in future releases. Please keep in touch with our blog, knowledge base and forums. And thank you.